Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. We are back as promised. Today, we're going to be giving you the drill on how to get started with new construction. And we're going to be going through a lot of detail. Um, this is a you know 20 to 30 minute podcast, so we're not going to be able to give you all the exact detail. If you want this exact list, it is waiting for you over on Premier Coaching. And if you're not yet a member of Premier Coaching, well, you know what to do. Text the word Premier, P-R-E-M-I-E-R to 47372. Text the word Premier to 47372, or just simply go to members.timandjulieharris.com. These notes, as well as an unbelievable amount of content, is waiting for you over on Premier Coaching. It's simple, it's free. Become a Premier Coaching member today. And yes, that does include a daily semi private coaching session with one of our Harris certified coaches. Monday through Friday, you're going to be on a private coaching session with a Harris certified coach. So you will have the exact direction, step by step what you can do to thrive because of this market. It's simple. Just text the word Premier to 47372, um, and then you can become a Premier Coaching member. And remember when texting, message and data rates may apply. So the question that all these guys have, Julie, is how do I get started on new construction? That's right. So we're going to take it literally step by step from the very basic intro all the way to really making this into a valid spoke for you. So point number one, actually find the new construction in your area. Create a file, a spreadsheet, a PDF, a notebook, however you operate, you've got to keep track of your new construction MLS, your personal resource guide for quick reference. The local builder associations can help you know who's building what, where, and for what price. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. For example, texasbuilders.org slash membership will give you a directory uh, usually they have a hard copy and then they have a digital copy. So find your builder association and it'll really shorten the learning curve. If you didn't listen to yesterday's podcast, go back and listen to it. But the gist of it is, is you as a real estate agent, no, don't wait for your broker to do it. Just go do it yourself. Join your local chapter of the BIA. And really what you're after essentially is their, their database. They're going to give you a list it could be a printed version, doesn't matter, of every single small, medium, large builder that's active in your community. It gives the phone number. It gives who the actual contact is inside the inside that builder's uh, business. It gives you, again, how many homes they sold last year, tells you what communities they're developing in, all kinds of really amazing information you can have right there at your fingertips. And that information is available when you join the Builders Association. Do that urgently. And by the way, when you are calling them, um, it's very, or, you know, essentially come in contact with them. Just mention you're a member of the BIA and immediately you're going to have something in common with them. It's not so much as a solicitation as that someone who's part of the same community reaching out to, as we discussed yesterday, bring potential, uh, you know, build opportunities to that builder. Again, listen to yesterday's shows for ideas on how to really bring value to that builder and the value of the builder will reward you with potentially some listings. Next. That's right. And you can't do number two if you didn't do number one on our list here, because number two is determine which which of those builders have new construction representatives on site, either in model homes or trailers. Now, the more urban developments, they may have a downtown office office that you have to visit them in. They may have a, a place where you go to pick out, uh, you know, model furnishings and things like that. So it's either going to be an actual home that's the model home or several of them. It could be a trailer. It could be an office. It could be any of these things. Well, so let's drill down a little bit on this. There are a lot of real estate brokerages that have new construction, new builder marketing teams or marketing departments. A Corcoran had a really good one in New York and there's others around the country. One of my best coaching clients actually, that's what he did. He worked for one of these national companies who they would go in and meet with con these. Uh, and you, uh, again, this is a niche in real estate. A lot of you probably don't know about. Well, let me break it down. So you're a builder. You build. You don't want to deal with customers. You just want to build. You don't want to market. 
uh, you just want to build. You don't want to actually have any in, in, in interface that's not needed with, you know, picking out grout tile and all this Mickey Mouse that goes along with working with actual customers. You just, you got it, want to build. So what you do is you'll um, list your project when, with one of these uh, companies that specialize in build outs. They'll go and do the, the, the model. They'll do the, you know, the pick room. They'll go and have somebody on site. They'll do every single, every single uh, interface that comes in direct contact with consumers. These third-party companies, which of which you can be one, are going to uh, scale that out for the builder. That way the builder can just build. You get the concept here? Now, that's available mostly to these really big, huge, massive builders, not to the small builders. So if you've got a builder that's got a little subdivision of six, maybe 12 homes, um, he might be thrilled if you were to go to him and say, listen, here's what I want to do. I will sit in a model. You put up a trailer or maybe you got a spec home that you want to put up and you want to have it as your model. I'll sit there for free, you know, every weekend for, you know, two or three hours a day. Because look, think of all the free leads you're going to get, especially if the, the this, uh, you know, this subdivision's in a great area. Um, in exchange, you list all your, all these homes are listed with me. Because you can create so many other transactions off that, that is a no-brainer for you guys. But it's going to take you being proactive. Most of these builders, most builders become builders uh, because they're originally framers or they're originally masons or they're maybe a family business. They're not thinking like you think. They're not thinking like a real estate agent. They're thinking like what they are, which are, you know, craftsmen, builders. So you've got to be the one that's going to take the idea. Why don't you make me your official marketing arm? Julie and I did that exactly what I just prescribed. And obviously thousands of our coaching clients have. And you look for those little small builders that don't have the, frankly, the business expertise, the marketing expertise, or maybe even the cash flow to be able to afford somebody on site to do the actual sales. You become that person, quote unquote, for free in exchange for the listings. That one idea is going to make someone listening, hopefully more than one person, a multi-multi-millionaire if you take that idea seriously. Next point, Julie. That's just one idea from this podcast. Okay, point number three, prioritize the builders who have reps on site for the sake of building your resale referral network. Remember, we talked about that yesterday. Those new build reps are communicating with people who have a house to sell before they can close on their new construction. Why would the new build rep give you the listing? Because most new build reps are not allowed. It's it's not, maybe they don't even have a license. They're not allowed to take any business outside of the business that they would have selling the new construction on behalf of the builder. You guys get it? How do you get that business? You're going to have to earn the business from bringing those uh, new build reps potential buyers. You're going to have to make it so they like you and that they trust you and that they see that you treat their customers like gold. They're going to have to know that when they flip one of their potential build clients who have a house to sell to you, that you're not going to walk off with that build client and introduce them to another builder. You're going to have to reinforce that new build rep as being obviously, and that new construction as being a great, op, you know, the option, the only solution. You, you get what I'm saying? Don't steal their customer and expect them to be loyal to you because they won't be. Don't say, well, thanks to the referral and then go out and sell them a resale. Respect the relationship. You obviously have to do what's best for the client, but when you're working with a new build rep and they send you a listing referral, just focus on the listing referral. Focus on getting the house sold. That's your job. Don't muddy the waters by getting overly involved on the up leg, which is the buying of the new construction. That's a good way for you not to form a long-term relationship with that new build rep. That's right. Speaking of which, number four, visit each development, get to know the product first. Remember, you have buyers that might be interested in that before you go asking for anything in return. That's just a quick little educational afternoon. But while you're walking around with those new construction reps, ask the following questions. Do they have spec homes? And be ready to take some notes on this. Not every builder is going to have the same answers. How do they handle home sale contingencies? Do they have in-house or special financing arrangements? Where else are they building? Do they ever list with agents on a house-by-house -house basis or entire projects? Who is their typical buyer? Asking these questions shows your interest and enthusiasm and getting the answers help you to know how to monetize that relationship. Now, remember these new builders, you're going to then to befriend them. You're going to take them all your buyers. This is when Julie and I had buyers agents, even when we work buyers ourselves, uh, the first thing we would do first time you took them out. Yes, you're going to show them, show them some resale, but you're going to take them to see the new build reps. You're going to in, in to see the new developments and it, you'd be shocked how frequently a buyer who swore they wanted a big yard with lots of leafy trees 
in some urban area falls in love with new construction because they like the floor plan because they love the idea of not having to repair or remodel a house. And it smells good. And exactly. It smells good. And they're excited to be part of a new community. It is very, very easy to sell buyer new a buyer new construction versus resale. And frankly, in a market like this, it's a lot cleaner in a lot of ways because the builder is going to be able to offer, like we talked yesterday, oftentimes above market commission. That's always nice. But incentives to the buyer to make it way more appealing, you know, maybe a discount on the, uh, the mortgage uh, rates. They can get a lower payment, maybe upgrades to the house, all kinds of extra incentives. So go out of your way to get to know as many of these new build reps as possible. And then the new build reps, like we are continuously reminding you, will most likely send you business as a way of saying, thank you one of the some of the top agents in the market in the united states they have a major spoke from working with some of these big builders at like a dr horton they'll have relationships with three or four of these new build reps these new build reps form their own relationships with the local agents um, outside of maybe the management of the company the management of the company isn't the one deciding who that uh, new build rep is going to send that listing referral to you guys get it work with boots on the ground. They're experiencing, these new build reps are experiencing the same thing you're experiencing. So help each other. Show the new build rep that you're going to support their success. They usually don't get paid commission per house. They get paid a, maybe a marginal override. They get paid commission on how many houses they sell total per year. They get a nice base, a base pay. And then again, some sort of up leg with regards to commission and, and incentives that way. So as you're bringing them buyers, as they're seeing your smiling face on a regular basis, they're then going to say, well, you know what? I need to keep Julie motivated to continue to bring me buyers. Uh, so I'm going to give her this listing referral. Or maybe this new this buyer is not a fit for any of the new construction I have. This buyer really, truly does want something I don't have for sale. And then they might flip that buyer back to you. These are the types of relationships that will get you through any kind of economic headwind. Absolutely. So that brings us to point number five, create a pop by plan to build relationships and get the inside scoop on those available homes. Be the one they call when somebody backs out of a new home that's just been completed. You can use our 12 month center of influence plan for ideas on pop buys or go to our private Facebook page. If you're a coaching member, you can see what other Harris coaching members are doing with their new construction relationships. And you bring up an important point. I should have had this in my notes. You don't have to go directly to the builder. You don't have to go hunt them down wherever they are. This is about relationships with those reps that are on site. You said um, you said something, but you didn't give a de oh, description sorry. of why you said it. So be the one they call when someone backs out of a new home that is just completed. In other words, that's a house that's not for sale yet. It's not actually technically a spec. It's like Julie said, it's a failed contract, but that could be something you could potentially list if it's not a huge builder. Otherwise you might have a perfect buyer for that house. Again, be of service to the build reps. Some of you, one of you, hopefully thousands of you are going to listen to this show and then create these massive real estate businesses just from essentially being a build rep agent, which is what we're describing how you can do it now. Point number six. Point number six, take appropriate buyers from your pipeline to the right projects and sell what you can. Remember, builders offering financing equals a higher price point, so the same payment for your buyers. So for example, lots of builder financing, that's a separate podcast that we'll do about how all of that works. But you made an interesting point earlier. There are a lot of buyers that just say, you know, new construction isn't for me because they've got some preconceived notion, right? That they're not gonna have this or they're not gonna have that or there's no trees in that neighborhood or whatever. Take them to new construction, obviously in the right price range, maybe a little bit higher than their resale price range because of the builder financing. And just say, you know what? I just wanna get your take on this. I wanted to pop by and say, hi, it's Susie and the model. We're buddies. I'm gonna drop these cookies off to her today. Let's just walk through. And I just want to get your take on how do you feel about this? Actually, you bring up another thought too. And this is again for the newish agents or agents who've never worked with builders before. Your job is to shut up when you're with a new build rep. New build reps won't tell you that, but they don't want you muddying the waters. Uh, you might sit in their office with them as they're talking with those buyers. But for the most part, let them do their jobs. They're, they're trained to sell that product to your buyer. Do not interfere in the process. You do not have to go and we advise you not to go, especially if the build reps have their own or the builders have their own pick room. A pick room would be different carpets and countertops and all the different things that the uh, buyer is going to choose when specking their house. They have professionals that are in those environments. And uh, sometimes in major cities, you're going to have essentially all the builders got together and they uh, started a business where a person will go 
from like there's 10 different builders that basically send all their buyers to this one particular place where they pick out all those things with the sales with essentially with the sales reps or the decorators that are working in those particular places you don't need to go we advise you not to go don't uh, essentially involve yourself in that aspect of it let the professionals be professionals next point that's right and these following points are a little bit more advanced they assume that you've done all of the points up to the up to here and you've got those relationships going so now we really start to drill down. Point number seven, take the appropriate new build reps to coffee to discuss referral arrangements for resale properties or other opportunities you've discovered so far. Make sure you know their product first, their price points. You know, you've gotten to know them at this point. You, you don't want to skip all those steps and then try and ask them for business. So just to be clear, in many cases, as you've developed relationships with these new build reps, and it won't take that long, maybe a couple of interfaces with them. You can then, in some cases, just call the new build rep and tell them that you're sending your buyers by to see them. And the new build rep will register your buyer with the builder so you don't have to worry about you know, the, the commission not being paid when, if that buyer builds that new build rep. Or other cases, you can have the actual registration form. You have the buyer fill it out and you just send that over to the build reps and then the buyers can go over and see the build reps on, at their leisure. And you can maybe show them some resale homes. Uh, but just keep in mind that what will happen is if that if that buyer goes in contract with that builder and let's say it's a four or six month build time, uh, you don't have to be involved in that process whatsoever. I was kind of just talking about that, but you will find that if you're very successful working with new construction, you're going to be receiving uh, some of you won't like what I say, but this is the truth. You'll be receiving uh, payments or paychecks, wires, checks, commission from deals that you didn't even remember putting together six months ago because all you did was introduce your buyers to this particular new builder up. You could be doing an open house today. You could have some people walk in who you just have a feeling they're going to be a good match for this new construction area that's nearby. You take them over and introduce them to the new build rep. New build rep registers them. They decide to build with that new build rep. Six months later, you're going to get a check in the mail. You met them once, maybe spent an hour with them. You guys get the point? You can do that if you're really aware and knowledgeable about the new construction and knowing that the new construction people, build reps on down to the decorators, they're part of your new construction team. And your job is to essentially create the relationship with the buyer and then hand that buyer off to the professionals that'll help them get through the new construction process. These are all important things to remember because agents have a tendency to overly complicate things because all kinds of stupid reasons. The most important thing to remember is let professionals do their jobs. Point number eight. Point number eight, set appointments, getting more advanced here, with the sales managers, the actual builder or the developer to discuss listing spec homes or projects. Use your pre-listing package with a modified listing plan of action for their project. Again, things we talk about in Premier Coaching, a little bit more advanced here because now you are actually asking for those listings. The number one agent in the United States is an agent based out of Dallas, I think, Russ something or another. Mm -hmm. He's the number one agent every single year based off volume and units sold, not based off commission. Huh, how can that be, Tim? Because he basically has a website where he lists, and I think it's just in Dallas, or just in Texas, I'm not sure, where he lists all the new construction uh, products for free, similar to what we were describing to you guys yesterday that um, Heath Moulton does in Iowa. And he has forever been able to generate enormous numbers of leads, enormous opportunities for his agents because he's following essentially what Julie and I are describing to you right now. Work with the builders. Understand that the builders do have a product that for most of your buyers will be more appealing. Work with those builders from when they're small just doing single, maybe even rehabs, or maybe a framer that wants to become a builder. Form those relationships and follow that builder through their career. Or go to the builders that are already doing onesies and twosies here and there, spec homes, remodels. All be, uh, Anyone who's a framer wants to be a builder. Anyone that wants to be a builder wants to be uh, have a subdivision. Anyone who's building a subdivision wants to build you know, a thousand homes. And just understand that's the natural career progression of these builders. You can work with them at any step in the road because what they need more than anything is they need buyers. They're going to need people that are going to buy their product. That is your job. That's right. So that leads us to number nine. I wrote lather, rinse, repeat. There are always new projects getting started all around you. So make sure you are educated, communicating, and participating 
Don't get stuck just after one afternoon of visiting these guys. This is a whole spoke. This is something that you're going to develop over time. And oftentimes initiating, if you get an opportunity to list some, you know, Julie and I remember when we were living in New Albany, Ohio, right outside New Albany, Ohio, there's an area called Johnstown and there was this massive parcel that I don't even remember how we got the lead on. And we, uh, it was just this ridiculous old cornfield or something. I mean, this is Columbus, Ohio, there's cornfields everywhere. And we were able to take that and we didn't have to do anything with it. We just got the relationship with the seller and then we introduced that to a builder. The builder loved it. The builder was going to then do all the development work, do, you know, essentially come up with all the things. And then when those came for sale, we were going to get the new construction listings. We were going to be able to list the whole thing as a subdivision listed uh, by us. And we were going to do all the marketing and, and new build reps and the whole thing. These are ways. Now, it, that one actually never happened because the builder didn't get their money and the economy changed. But that was an example of how you can actually create your own inventory endlessly. I gave you an example yesterday or maybe it was today of our friend Vinod with Urban Living in Houston. And that's what he does. He creates his own inventory. You know, inventory can be created from going out there and proactively lead generating inventory, listing inventory, being created in other, a number of ways. How about going out and creating your own? How about finding the land? How about finding the builder? How about essentially getting the builder to agree that if he's going to buy that land, what he puts on there, you're going to get the listing. This is creating your own inventory downrange. You can create your own pipeline of business the way we're describing it. And it's very clear for a long period of time where there is going to be a deficit of homes for sale and new builders who are able to build in this marketplace are going to always have a demand for their product. Why not bring them those opportunities? You guys get it? Sure beats complaining about no inventory, doesn't it? It does. All right, point number 10. Consider joining your area's architectural review committee, the Urban Planning Commission, or other organizations so you can be on the inside track. You talked about smaller builders and doing infill and stuff like that. This is how you find out who's pulling build permits, who's investigating that lot that's downtown, like what Vinod likes to, to develop. Well, What's going on with you know opportunity zones and all that kind of thing. Here's another, I just have all these, my brain's firing off. Yep. But you could, there's a lot of apartment complexes that were not originally designed to be apartment complexes that were originally designed to be condos. Julie and I have some of these units in Las Vegas. And so they're originally designed to be, you know, like I said, really nice condos. This was, and we bought these back in 07, 08 market crash, um, a big, uh, essentially a, um, it wasn't even a big, that big of a, uh, you like know, an investor, an investor. Thank you. An investor bought the uh, mass of these condos and the, the husband and wife made them all into apartments and they're still apartments to this day. Well, obviously they're going to want at some point take those apartments and convert them or not even convert them, but make them back into condos and they can start selling them. So how many areas in your marketplace right now could be quote unquote apartment conversions or how many of them right now were originally condos now have been leased out long-term that can be made back into um, condos. That's a great way to solve the inventory problem. There's a lot of, don't be surprised. Matter of fact, uh, you will be surprised how frequently you will discover a lot of people that don't think like that. So you will go through the MLS today and you're going to find this amazing townhome or brownstone community. And you're going to say, well, that would just be an amazing place to have a bunch of condos, right? Great location. Everything is really perfect for someone to have that as a long-term house and it's for sale. What makes you think other potential buyers, uh, or thinking as big as what I just described to you, making those into condos, creating your own inventory. What makes you think that the listing agent had the thought, well, we should just make these into individual listings uh, with their own parcel numbers and sell them as condos. Don't think other people are thinking bigger because most times people are just thinking transactionally. Look for the opportunity. Look for things that you can make into other things like what I'm just describing. And hopefully this is resonating with all of you because the world in the country is full of opportunities like this if you're willing to see it. That's right. And don't get intimidated by these later steps like what, what you were just going through, Tim, because we've given you the step by step process for how to get started. And then, of course, point number 11, join Premier Coaching so that our expert Harris certified coaches can help you develop this source of business to the highest level. What Tim just described your pro is probably not going to be your first action step. You're going to grow into that. But you've seen, hopefully over this podcast series, how much just oodles of opportunity there are in so many different directions when you get good at new construction. So our coaches can help you tighten your learning curve, shorten your learning curve, hold you accountable, move you forward faster than trying to figure all this out on your own. This is a big, very broad spoke, and there's many different directions that you can develop. 
but I highly recommend that you get help and you don't try and do this by yourself. We can help you get there faster. Well, so let's, let's end today's show with the story. Sure. All right. And this is a true story. And it's funny because, you know, it led to so many transactions. What I'm about to tell you led to millions and millions of dollars in commission and I don't even know, hundreds of transactions. We got a call. Actually, Julie got a call. Um, we were home office when we sold real estate and Julie gets a call and the call is from a builder at uh, Truco, remember? Yeah, I do remember? And, and his, what's okay, your story? Well, I use the story to show why you should call everybody back, right? right? Um, and it, I call it my dirt call because it was like, hey, this is Matt. I, I got some dirt. Would you like me to bring it over and put it on your lot over around the corner on whatever street we had listed? It was in time? your voicemail. It sounded half crazy, to be honest. And I almost deleted it because who calls somebody that wants to dump dirt on your lot? Right? Well, you gave it to me. Yeah. You, you make, we were like, well, Tim, I just got somebody that's calling to offer some dirt. And then I realized what he was doing is because we had listed a spec home for another builder. And this spec home was uh, $900,000. We list, we actually, we found the builder. We found the lot. The lot had blue approved plans on it. We brought the builder to the, uh, you know, basically put the deal together and we ended up selling out ourselves, but that's not the dirt story. So the dirt story was, is this Matt Truco saw that we had this listing. He saw that we hadn't started on the construction site. Um, that the builder hadn't started on it. Ray Robinson was the builder. Right. And he was asking if we needed fill dirt because he was about to big, dig, dig a basement for the foundation of this house he was building. So he was looking for a place to dump this dirt. And he was trying to do us a favor by giving us the dirt that otherwise we would have had, by we, I mean the builder on this other house would have had to pay for it. You guys following? Yeah, and it was around the corner. would have been convenient for yeah. him. Right? For, it had been great for and Ray. Too. And we ended up taking the dirt. Ray yeah. ended up taking exactly. the dirt, right? But so, yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, I got some dirt. And I don't know if you guys, it's like, you know, we were making fun of it. Then it occurred to me, oh, I know what the hell this guy's asking. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. So we called him back and sure enough, not only was he about to dig a foundation for a spec house that was going to be over a million dollars, but he actually had two other lots that he had bought. Now he bought the lots from the builder the, or the developer. The developer had an in-house real estate company, New Albany Realty. Mm -hmm. The in-house real estate company agent was complacent, yep. was not following up with Matt the builder. So Matt the builder was liking what Julie and I were doing. Uh, obviously being urgent, helping him solve problems. And then we met with him. We talked to them. So Matt, the builder ended up listing all three of those with us. Um, and then he also ended up listing a house, uh, two houses clear across town that were, by the way, expiring with other agents, listed them with us. We got those sold without price adjustments, by the way, marketing, advertising, but a really great description is what got them sold. Really cool houses, but really strange this. lots. Yeah. And then he listed a 73 unit condo development with us years later. One county away. This is from a dirt call. It was from a dirt call. So there's a lot of lessons in that, right? One is call everybody back, even if they sound, you know, like you don't understand them. Furiously fast lead follow Furiously up. Furiously fast lead follow up. You know, we've had podcasts on that. Okay. <laughs> uh, number two, don't assume that the builder you're talking to only does a certain type of thing. So take Matt, for example, he had the 3 million plus properties, new construction that he listed with us. He had two other, I don't, were those new, brand new? I can't remember whether they were rehab or new, but he had two, literally like two zip codes away in a different neighborhood. And then he also had those little pinwheel type condos in a different county. So this is a great example. I'm glad you remembered that. Um, a great example of one call, okay? One relationship, many, many opportunities because it wasn't just what he listed with us. It was also what we got because I think even Coach Rochelle was, was in one of those models and the resale that came from the people that were building, the sign calls we got from the higher end listings that we got, one thing leads to the next, right? Okay, another story. Same community, this is New Albany Country Club. We get a call from Ray and Ray has this listing that is a little weird. Uh, Ray used to build churches. Only weird in that the inside of it was so decked out with <laughs> crown molding and detail. It was awesome. Like you couldn't flipping believe how beautiful it was on the inside. But the other, I will call them complacent. You can use whatever word you'd like to. Realtors in the marketplace were not enthusiastic about his listing. Because it was different. Because it was different. So Julie and I, and there was a, a, a little bit of a field behind his house and then there was a church. Um, so they are saying that the commercial property was an eyesore or whatever. They just were not very enthusiastic about the listing. So Ray lists the house with us. Well, what they didn't realize was Ray actually used to be a huge commercial builder. 
and Ray wanted to get into residential building, okay? So they didn't realize why Ray's house was so fancy on the inside. They were just being kind of arrogant and kind of entitled. So we got the listing and then Ray ends up, um, he said, I want to build houses. I want you guys to rep me. I want you to help me find lots. All this started, all these dominoes started falling. And from Ray, we ended up doing three or four multi-million dollar and a, a million dollar plus spec homes. We ended up doing many, many other little resale homes. He was buying investment properties, but actually that's not the best story. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's another good story. Same community, New Albany Country Club. Yes. So we get a call, <laughs> right? It always starts the call yep. and we call them back. And this was uh, a doc, the doctor, yep. right? Okay, so this, oh, yeah, that's a great right. So he has again. This was an expired listing, and this doctor calls us, and this is an expired listing that that's in his that's uh, not in New Albany Country Club. It's in an adjacent community that he bought as an investment property, and he called us up, and he just straight up said, "I've been listing with the local agents. This is when we are new to this marketplace, guys. So this is hopefully encouragement to all of you guys." Who were, and this was when the market was transitioning, similar to what's happening now. It's the reason that Julie and I are yep. so excited about a market like this. It creates opportunities for different agents. So he gets he calls us in um, Dr. P, right? Yep. And he said, I have a house that just is about to expire, you know, and we I've seen that you guys are selling listings in my marketplace. And Julie and I were getting from expires and for sale by owners. We we're getting these listings sold. He called us. We sold a house around his around the corner that we got from a referral from a relocation company. Remember that? And it, remember? Well, it's even better than that. He he originally called because he saw us doing an open house. Yep. In the sleet yep. in this really high end neighborhood that the other agents were like, oh, you know, you just don't do open houses over here. Mm -hmm. And I remember because we were all like, oh my gosh, we're doing an open house. It's terrible weather. But I will never forget, because nobody did open houses then, and the house was vacant, which was great. Well, it's because the agents were lazy. The agents were lazy. We had cars lined up yep. to Ely, go through that open house. Ely, Ely Court. Court. Yep. yep. So, so then we sell this. We sell Ely Court in like 22 seconds. Uh, he sees that we sell it. He says, well, I'm going to get. I'm gonna throw these guys a bone. If this little house that he listed with us wasn't expensive. Of course, we sell it right away. Um, hardly needed any work. It was vacant. It was a great listing. But then he calls us back. Like we didn't like. Okay, nice. Maybe he had this random rando investment property. Then he call. He says, "Why well, have some other properties on my list with us?" And I'm like, "Huh? Like dumb me didn't actually go to property records to see how many properties this guy owned." I remember when we did, and I remember calling you over to my desk going. Look at how many, it was like page after page on the treasurer's website of what he owned. All residential homes. And he owned, I bet you he owned five or 600 homes. Yeah, tons. And and he started, you know, he would swap out of one, buy one, sell one. And he was using Julie and I for all those transactions just because we did what we didn't want to do and we didn't want to do it at the highest level. He saw us making the effort. He, and he actually said to us, I'll never forget this. He said, you guys are hustlers. You guys are out there working this market. You're trying to make a difference. You're getting properties sold. Other agents are waiting for the properties to be sold. You know, it was an incredible relationship. So much so that he actually became a private lender for us. This yes. is how rich he was. Mm -hmm. um, he was an actual Raja from India. For those of you guys who don't know what that is, it's in essence like a royal family member. We didn't know about that until we got to know him. And a cardiologist. And a cardiologist, right. An amazing guy. Yeah. Truly an amazing gentleman. Absolutely. So, so he, list, he ended up basically starting to do like second mortgages for us. So if we had... Uh, this was back a different time, a different market, but sometimes we'd have buyers that wanted to buy an expensive house. They had to put more money down than they had in cash. He would hold a, like a 12 month second mortgage for him and he would just do it off usually a, a phone call. Here's the deal. They want to do a 50,000 second. This is the interest rate. This is the term. And he would just say, yes, click. I mean, that was it. And then he, we'd essentially send it over to his attorney and his attorney would take care of it from there. Yeah. But these relationships all, they didn't come from highfalutin educations and from somebody we met at the first class lounge or all this other crap. This came from Julie and I being boots on the ground, doing what we oftentimes didn't want to do and we didn't want to do it and always hustling. And that's really the bottom line. And that's true to this day. That's really something I hope that you guys get from listening to this podcast. I hope you understand that if you made that an innate part of you, even if you didn't come hardwired like that, you can manifest it. But for you to actually feel that you're going to have to start doing it when you do it and you get the experience of doing it. And then you get the, um, 
frankly, the emotional and the financial payoff of having done it, you will do it more often. You've changed the way you think. If you want to really work on your mindset, dream boards and all those places may or may not have a, have a, you know, a place in that uh, recreation of your mindset. If you really want to work on your mindset, take the actions that are going to lead to the person you want to be and magically along the way your mindset changes. That's right. Now you, you shared three stories that were somehow intertwined with each other. Okay. I don't know if you remember Dr. P also, you mentioned the hard money loan. Okay. He also saved a five contingency deep deal for yep. us which is also where we learned things like how to use the ultimate addendum and the fact that somebody might appear to be all cash, but they're actually secretly contingent on something weird. Well, he did it because he gave, I remember the lady, she was real grouchy. Yep. He gave that lady a second mortgage. Mm -hmm. That's, That's how right. he... And so the reason that I intertwine all these things is you don't have to know what it's all going to lead to. We didn't back then. Actually, he gave her a first mortgage for $400,000. I do remember that now. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And he also saved a little first time buyer deal that was contingent. And actually Ray Robinson was in the middle of some of that on a rental. Okay. <laughs> so it's even, it's even more convoluted than that. But my point in bringing this up is you don't have to know all of this or where you're going to go with it. Your path will probably be a bit different than ours, but you do have to take the first step. You have to get into action. All the stories that we just shared with you, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, of course, we can say, Thank you, Tim and Julie, for taking action back then. We can also say, you know, at the time, it was too soon to tell. We didn't know that the dirt call would lead to all of these other things. It was too soon to tell. But one thing that was consistent with all of those stories, and I would say this is same with our, our hair certified coaches, Coach Rochelle, our whole staff, is that we took action. We didn't sit around and ruminate and stay in analysis paralysis. Should we call back? Shouldn't we call back? What's this about? I'm going to go research everything. We just simply took action and had the faith that it would work out. The motivation comes from the action. Yes. The motivation comes from actually taking the action. Don't look for motivation and rationalize. You'll get an action after that. Do it the opposite way of the way you've been doing it or told it has to be done. And I get it. You want to be motivated. You want to be have someone you know help you walk on coals and all the rest of it. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if you really truly want to be successful, consistently with ever increasing levels of success in your business and personal life, it truly does come down to doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. And it's magical when you make that innate within you. It becomes who you are. And then you start realizing opportunities all around you. So if you're feeling fear, if you're feeling scarcity, if you think the walls are coming in all around you, if you're feeling financial fear for the first time, if you're all of a sudden finding yourself uh, selling real estate in a market that's unfamiliar to you, good, congratulations. Now you need to take action on it. You need to take the actions necessary to make it so that you have the skills that are required for you to actually know how to make the transactions happen. The point that Julia was just making is when we said yes and we called those people back, we really didn't necessarily know what we were going to do to solve some of those problems, but we said, yes, we're going to figure it out along the way. And we learned quickly, which is ultimately one of the key ingredients of anybody who's successful. The idea that you're going to learn and then you're going to earn is stupid. Do not do it. You will go broke because you'll never stop learning. That is a lazy, complacent way to approach anything in life. You need to earn while you're learning or learn while you're earning. Because if you want to learn, for example, how to work with for sale by owners or unrepresented owners, don't study the scripts and role plays. Oh, I mean, obviously do for all that stuff. Hours for and hours and hours and hours. I'm going to call my first FISBO, but I need to role play another 15,000 times. Nope. Go knock on that FISBO's door, stumble, say stupid things, make mistakes. And the very, uh, your innate uh, fear or the, uh, what do you want to call it? The adrenaline of being in that environment will cause your brain to work at a higher level, which will cause you True. to uh, learn faster, which will cause you to be good at it a lot quicker because you want to avoid the pain of looking like a boob uh, two times in a row. You guys get it? But you got to fail forward. Absolutely. Did I say something wrong? No, no, no. I was just laughing because I remember the first closing that I went to. I actually said, you know, this is, and this still happens in a lot of the country. You go to a round table closing, we're all signing off together. And the title agent says, now we're going to go over the termite report. And I kid you not, I said, what termite report? I didn't even, I didn't know. It was our first deal. Is there someone named termite? He I'm was like, supposed to have a report. What are you talking about? Right. And so fortunately the title agent of course is connected to all these termite guys. 
and very calmly excused herself. And she said, let me talk to you for a second. We left the room. She's like, I think I got your back on this. We're going to call the termite guy while we're signing all the mortgage documents with this other person. We're going to hope that there's no termites. Then he's going to fax me this back when you would fax things right to this closing table. And then we'll sign off. You don't have to say anything else. But I felt like such a moron not knowing that you had to do a termite report. It was our first transaction. We didn't know anything from anything, but yet it closed. And because I was in the moment, I was nervous. I was embarrassed to your point, earn while you learn, learn while you earn. Boy, did I remember that? Because when you're nervous and you're in a heightened sense, you remember things more. It's a more intense lesson to you. And this becomes what we now call experience. Well, so that's what Premier Coaching is all about. Premier Coaching is not a place for you to you know, go learn and then down the road, you're going to start earning. Premier Coaching is designed to be something that's going to be your wingman as you're in the field earning. Yes. It's going to be a reference source for you. You're going to be able to lean into Premier Coaching when you have the situations like we described to you. Julie and I didn't have Premier Coaching. We were, There were no coaches back when we were, you know, basically in our formal years in our early 20s when we were selling real estate. We had to figure this stuff along the way out and maybe ask helpful title agents like Julie just yeah. described. You don't. You've got Premier Coaching that you can lean into. You've got our community of like-minded frankly, very optimistic and powerful real estate professionals from around the country and a lot of them in different countries as well outside the United States. And you've got our new member, or I'm sorry, you've got our hair certified coaches that are there for you to actually lean into if you have any Literally questions. Literally every day. Every day. So you don't have to sort of figure it out along the way. You can say yes, you can move forward knowing that Premier Coaching's got your back. That is what you're looking for. That is what you need. That is the excuse, uh, you know, essentially... The excuses you've been using not to put yourself in situations that make you uncomfortable in your mind, when you join Premier Coaching, your mindset's going to shift because you're going to look for opportunities to be of service to other people because you know what you're going to run up against. We're going to have you covered. Listing presentations, buyer presentations, scripts how to overcome this, scripts how to overcome that. Every single aspect of how to build your you know, relationships with new builders, it's all there waiting for you. This is something that we didn't just design in the last 10 minutes. This has been designed over the last two decades. Premier Coaching is always being evolved. All the scripts, all the objection handlers, nothing is the same as it was even you know 12 months ago. Everything is constantly being updated. That's what Julie's in charge of. That's her primary job in our coaching business. She has a little team and they then are constantly upgrading staff. Our, we get a lot of information from some of our top producing agents. They're giving us suggestions on how to make content better. That's what Premier Coaching is. It's a constantly evolving educational platform. But please understand, coaching members, there's thousands of you that are involved in our coaching program. Do not learn and then think you're going to earn. Learn while you earn. Earn while you learn. Get into action. This marketplace right now has so much opportunity. Every single one of you should wake up every single morning and being unbel feeling unbelievably blessed because of the fact that we're going through these changes. I don't mean that in a way of being dispassionate to people that are experiencing hardships or will be experiencing hardships. I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting that you have an unbelievably uh, long runway ahead of you of years, if not decades of success, provided you're willing to get your head spaced right. Your headspace should be focused on being of service to other people. If that's what your focus is going to be, then now the next natural step is for you to learn how to be of service to people. And that's what Premier Coaching is all about. Text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to members.timandjulieharris.com. In the meantime, you guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. Hello, thank you for having watched this video. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right. And don't forget to hit that like button. Leave your comments and questions below and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're going to love that one.